Uh, my name is Steve Klein, K-L-E-I-N. I am uh, board president and senior curator out here at Cedar Cove Feline Sanctuary Conservatory Education Center. The importance of this park is to, to be a spearhead of educational outreach, to use the proximity to these animals, to allow people to see firsthand what nature is like what it is that, that we don't witness every day in our very manufactured, very carefully controlled civilizations. And that there is a world out there that is dying off in mass because of one species activity. And if we don't do something about that, we're on that domino chain as well. So we will fall. A usual day out here is based on animal care and maintenance and improvements, you know, it always starts out making sure the animals are, are healthy because we have some animals that are geriatric because when they're with us, they're here for the rest of their life and they could live to be 20, 22 years old. Um, making sure that the animals are healthy, that they have water, that their enclosures are clean as you see here, and then providing enrichment, whether it's toys or, or the uh, protected interaction that we have with some of these animals. Um, preparing the food for the smaller cats and then continuing with our plans to renovate and improve our structure, our, our footprint, giving the animals the best possible habitats we can, giving the public the best possible access they can to let them feel intermingled with nature, as I said, so that you really feel that connectedness when an animal is looking back at you. And you don't get that through a tablet or a screen. But here, when an animal smells you and won't stop staring at you, that leaves an impression. The two the two contenders for my the favorite aspects of what I do here are my relationships with the animals, having that interaction, having the, the, the friendship that I have, but equally up there is sharing this with others, with the school groups with, that we get out here, the young minds, opening their eyes to a greater world, creating that sense of wonder that is going to drive their curiosity and it's gonna cause them to wanna to help solve these problems. We have seven tigers. They're all Bengal tigers with the exception of one that is a Bengal-Siberian mix. He was the only one that was actually born out here. All the rest are adopted from other facilities. Uh, we have Sundari and Olivia. They're both Bengal tigers. That white recessive gene is found only in the Bengal subspecies, but not in the wild anymore. We've killed all the white tigers in the wild. We have another white tiger who's out in our habitat, Kamar, who is 12 years old. Then we have Kaliana, their older sister, who is uh, five years old. So those three girls are related. Same parents, uh, the second two are from a different litter. Then we have Journey, who is out in our other habitat for the tigers, who came from uh, a facility that was using her as a, a pay to play interaction experience. Get your picture taken, uh, play with the cat for X amount of dollars and they did not have the experience or the, the credentials to do that, so we adopted that animal from six months on. Uh, the next, well, actually the oldest tiger we have behind us is Jai, who is 15 years old, and she is retired from a traveling performing show of cats. They would go around to state fairs, things like that, and uh, set up an exhibit, and he had cats that would do tricks. Her trick was to stand on her back legs and hop over the backs of her sisters and uh, to continue hopping. So in the process of doing that, they have to put a collar and a leash on them and they hang that on a hook high enough up that they can't put their front paws on the ground. They have to stand upright. That's how they develop that upright posture. But if she's up and moving, you can see the impact it's had on her spine. So th those are all of our tigers. We have two lions. We have six bobcats uh, because they're common throughout this area. Some co have come from individuals who have brought them in. Uh, thinking, oh, it's just a little kitten, wouldn't this be wonderful? Um, we have a, a leopard named Voodoo who is adopted as a house pet, declawed, and uh, you know, by the time he was five months old, he was beating up two fully grown Rottweilers, was tearing up furniture. We have a cougar named Tom that was purchased by a truck driver to be a ride along companion. We have a Eurasian lynx named Boris. Uh, there's another serval in the house named Kenya. Um, we have two wolves, Lakota and Kiowa, that we got when they were just little pups to be companions for a wolf named Shadow that we adopted when we adopted Kamar the White Tiger. Then just within the past year and a half, we adopted uh, two foxes. 
a red fox, which is native to this area, and an arctic fox, which a, a young gentleman had purchased from a breeder in Indiana. Oh, and we have uh, two Kawadamundi as well. They are relatives of the raccoon from Central and South America. In the process of having a sanctuary and taking in some animals to help other facilities out, you wind up running across a variety of other animals as well. There are a number of things you can actually do to help support these animals in the wild. So aside from just conscious efforts towards recycling, reducing our impact, being aware of where we're getting things, and spreading awareness, there are actually organizations that are protecting these animals. There's one called the Thin Green Line uh, that is an anti-poaching effort. They're, they're, they're going after the poachers that are poaching these most endangered animals. If they really want to help, come out. Come out and see the place. Meet us and, and see what this place is like. And there are plenty of ways that individuals will find to help us that we haven't even thought of ourselves. No effort is too small. And it's never too late to start. But, but there is there is an, an epic change coming and we have to be aware of it. We have to acknowledge it first and we have to be prepared.